So how long does IVF takes place? Usually the process of IVF, you know, we say one cycle is one month. Okay. Okay. But the first two and two and a half weeks is the active treatment. So what I mean by this is the different steps which happen like ovarian stimulation to get more number of eggs, mm. collect the eggs outside under mm. anesthesia and the fertilization process happening in the lab, mm. the growth of embryos and replacement of the embryos. So okay. these are the different steps. Okay. This takes about two to two and a half weeks. Okay. okay the last 10 to 12 days is for the, um, is, is a waiting time. Okay. Mm -hmm. To see if the treatment has worked for you. Mm. So one cycle is one month. But the first two to two and a half weeks is the active processes and the later part is the waiting time to see if it has worked for people. Okay. So one cycle is one month. That's all okay. it yeah. So the most common question is, uh, is yeah. IVF painful? Yes, yeah, yes. That's, a very, that's the most common question we yeah. hear. As soon as we say you need IVF, mm -hmm. that is the first question couples ask us. Okay. Mm -hmm. So to reassure, the IVF is not a painful process. Okay. So basically when we look at the different steps, the first step is ovarian stimulation. Mm -hmm. Here the, it is not painful. The injections which we give are very, very, you know, using thin needles we do. Mm -hmm. uh, people are usually, you know, the public are very common. Uh, commonly they know what is called insulin injection. Mm. So the injections we use are also like that. It comes as a pen with a very, very small needle. Mm. So these are not painful. It goes under the skin. You know, okay. you don't even feel like an ant bite. It's even less than the, the, the pain okay. if you can okay. relate to. Um, but some of the women have more number of eggs, like policy, mm. women with polycystic ovaries. For them, they can feel a little bit heaviness in the mm -hmm. tummy when we are stimulating. But apart from that, it's not painful, the stimulation process. Yeah, The, the only process which is painful in IVF is the egg collection. Because we have to pass a needle into the ovary and collect the eggs. Mm. For this process, we give a light anesthetic. Okay. 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 So when they get up or get out of the anesthetic, there is no pain. Because okay. we just pass the needle, right? Okay. We have not done cut stitches, nothing. Right. So there is no pain when they get out or come out of the anesthetic. Right. right. Even if they feel some discomfort, it usually settles in a few hours. Mm -hmm. And the third procedure in IVF is called embryo transfer. Mm -hmm. where we have to put the cultured embryos back right okay so that is a very simple process okay there is no anesthesia for that mm -hmm. we load the embryos in a small narrow plastic tube mm -hmm. and it goes inside the uterus mm -hmm. so uh, as we have seen the different processes it uh, ivf is not a painful process so we usually reassure the couples when they come Mm -hmm. But it is not painful. It is just a myth that IVF, you know, is very painful. Okay. It's very complicated. It's very, very simple. Okay. So, are there any side effects with FSH injections? Yes. So, again, another common uh, question which they ask when we say talk about IVF is, uh, you know, is, I, is the FSH injections got side effects, hormone mm -hmm. injections? It will make me put on weight, all these mm. things. These are all myths actually. Okay. okay. Why is mainly because FSH injections, we call it as a half-life. They are in your body only for 24 hours. Mm. And that's the very reason we inject every, we have to inject every day for 9 to 10 days. Mm. So it's not going to stay in your system for long. Mm. So that it's causing, you know, like things like weight gain and all those. It's not related to that. So, but uh, these hormone injections, FSH, usually this is the same hormone your body produces. But we are using it in slightly higher doses so that we get more eggs. That's the logic. Mm. So usually it does not have side effects. There's only one group of uh, women who are called with uh, women with polycystic ovaries. They have got more number of eggs. Mm. So sometimes what happens when we give these hormone injections, they over respond. Okay. So even if they over respond, these days what we do is we collect the eggs out, mm -hmm. make the embryo and freeze those embryos. Mm -hmm. We don't put them back in the same cycle. Mm -hmm. So only when we put them back in the same cycle, it can cause side effects. Okay. So we freeze them. Okay. So and then we can always replace it at a later date. So that's okay. what we do. Okay. So basically IVF is a very, very safe process these days. Okay. So there's nothing major to work to worry about or, you know, worry about the side effects and, you know, it is very, very simple procedure. Okay. So what is Thank the you. success rate of uh, egg freezing concept? Yeah. So success rates, you know, of in general of IVF, if you look at, okay. we are looking in good clinics. And the female age is less than 35. Mm -hmm. And we are able to replace two good embryos, the blastocyst we call it as. Mm -hmm. The success rates are around 65%. So what is the success rate in IVF? Yeah. Usually, you know, one cycle of IVF yeah. in good clinics, in younger women, say the woman is less than 35 years, mm -hmm. with two good embryos. Mm -hmm. We call it as blastocyst when they are a day 5 embryo. That is after the okay. uh, its egg retrieval is done. Culture, day 5. 
So these are the embryos we really want to put back, okay. blastocysts. We have a success rate of about 60 to 65 percent, okay. which means say 10 people come to us, six can conceive in the first cycle only, just with one cycle of IVF. Okay. So it is very, very good. The reason we, we are, I refer to as the less than 35 years with two blasts, this reflects the clinic success rates. Okay. okay. But when you look at an individual couple, the success rates might be different. Mm -hmm. It's mainly because not all of them have uh, two good embryos to go, go back. The age may be say 40. So then this success rates doesn't apply. Okay. So when we talk about the success rates, there are several factors which influence the success rates. Okay. It's not just one value. Okay. okay. What the clinic's quality or standard, what is reflected is in this one, in this, in the, in the thing, what I explained. Less okay. than 35 years, good embryos, they are good prognostic women, we call it as. For mm -hmm. those, we see a results of 65% in good clinics. Yeah. Okay. And the other thing which reflects is a donor rate. If the success we see as high as 70%, this is what reflects the clinic success rates. Okay. But when a couple, say, for instance, a woman is about 40 years, her success will be about 25 to 30% in one cycle, not 65. Okay. So there are several factors as Said. Okay. One is the age of the woman. That is the most important factor. Okay. The second factor which influences the success rates is the ovarian egg number. Mm -hmm. Some women have very low egg number. Mm -hmm. So in these women as a whole, we quote only about 35% as a success mm -hmm. rate. Okay. As opposed to say, as I said, 65% for okay. good prognostic women. Okay. So this is another reason. Okay. The third factor which affects the success rates, what we can see is the quality of the embryo. Mm -hmm. See, for some women, uh, for some couples, what happens is the egg looks okay on its own, sperm looks okay on its own, mm -hmm. but their embryo quality is very poor. Mm -hmm. So if it's a good embryo quality, then the success rates are good. Mm -hmm. If it's a poor embryo quality, then the success comes down. Mm -hmm. And another important factor is chromosome abnormality. If there is uh, in the embryo, then it won't implant. Okay. Or even if it implants, miscarriages happen. Okay. And for some other couples, there are issues in the uterus, like what we call as a polyps or a fibroid, which can also affect the success rate. Okay. So these are some of the things which we look can influence. But in general, in good clinics, this is what we are looking at. Okay. So we always talk about what is called a personalized, you know, success rates apart from the clinic success rates. Okay. Yeah. So major factors for miscarriages. No. Miscarriages are uh, very, very common. Okay. It happens normal conceptions and it also happens with IVF. So it's very common. Okay. So the reasons miscarriages happens is the most commonest reason we say is chromosome abnormalities. Mm -hmm. So in, when the egg and the sperm come together, the, mm -hmm. sometimes there is a chromosome issue. Mm -hmm. Chromosomes, you would have heard, you know, when the cell develops, there are 46 mm -hmm. cells, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So from biology in school, yeah. yeah. Yes. So this, yeah. So there can be some small defect in that. Mm -hmm. So that can lead to abnormal chromosomes. And okay. the chromosome is abnormal, then the embryo doesn't implant. Mm -hmm. And or, or even if it implants, miscarriages happen. Mm -hmm. So this is the commonest reason. So one in five pregnancies miscarry. Okay. Whether it is IVF or with spontaneous conceptions. Mm -hmm. So with one miscarriage, we don't tend to do extensive tests. Mm -hmm. We just reassure the couple mm -hmm. that, you know, majority of the pregnancies go well next time. Mm -hmm. But in about, about you know, 10% of the 1% uh, of them, what happens is they repeatedly miscarry. Okay. So, you know, not just one miscarriage, but second time, third time. Mm. So, when they do that, then we do specific tests for them mm. and offer advanced technologies. Mm -hmm. Say, for instance, what tests we do, one test, it is called chromosome testing of the couple. Of mm. the more both partners we test mm. to see if there is any problem in either of them mm. contributing to the abnormality. Mm -hmm. So the other test which do is called blood clotting tests. Okay. okay. For, for some uh, women, they have a higher tendency to you know, clot the blood clotting happens. Oh, okay. 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 So that can impede the development of the embryo. So we do these tests to see if there are any issues they have. Okay. And if it is, we can address them accordingly. Okay. And these days we have advanced technologies in IVF called okay. PGTA. It's okay. called pre-implantation genetic testing. Okay. So this also we offer for women who repeatedly miscarry. 